As a very young child, Kakarot's inner Saiyan nature was suppressed due to a head injury he received falling down a ravine. He forgot his family, his race, his whole planet, and even who he really was. Who he really was was a low-class Saiyan, Kakarot, who was destined to take over the planet Earth for the Saiyans. Now, he's the young boy Goku, savior of the planet Earth from the Demon King Piccolo, the opposite of what he was intended to be. This other side of Goku, his Kakarot side, has been hidden away inside himself. So hidden that even the Devil Might Beam could detect its presence. However, the god of the Earth, Kami, has been able to detect it, as he has gone through a similar ordeal with evil in his heart. As Goku trains on the lookout, Kami can feel Kakarot's presence growing stronger as well. If he allows Goku to continue training like this, then perhaps his evil self will one day emerge as strong as Goku or stronger and eliminate them all. He has to prevent that from happening. Kami puts Goku through the same ritual he received from the previous Kami to separate the evil from his heart. With this, the good and evil halves split into Goku and Kakarot. The two stare at each other, dumbfounded on what has just occurred. Kami explains to Kakarot that he's not going to do what the last Kami did and attempt to kill the evil half. He's going to give him a chance to trade with him and extinguish the evil from him. Kakarot tells Kami that his mission is for all humans to be extinct, and this Namekian isn't going to get in his way. He's freed him from his prison, and now he can enact his mission for all Saiyans. Goku asks how this guy is him at all, as he said like 20 words that he doesn't understand. Kakarot is sickened to see what had become of him all this time, though thanks him for granting him more and more power. With his power he has, he'll be able to destroy this fake copy. Kakarot fires a Ki Blast at Goku, who dodges out of the way and rushes in to strike Kakarot. The two clash blows, with them quickly noticing that their power isn't as high as it should be. Them splitting also split their power in half. Kakarot curses this outcome, knowing that he can't win like this, so backs off. He tells them he'll see them again once his powers is regained. Then, this planet is his. Kakarot flies off the lookout, with Kami sighing, asking why they always just fly off. Kami continues to trade Goku up on the lookout to recover his lost strength, as Kakarot lands down on the earth below proper, happy that he can finally enjoy killing humans in the name of the Saiyans. He waits out in the forest for several nights to concentrate and tries to build his power back up. He plans for when the next full moon will rise, and once it does, he begins his strike. He looks up into the sky to transform into a great ape, beginning his rampage. The great ape's attack is reported on the news, but to see fighters being alerted of its rampage and not believing it, they fly to the location and see that it's true. Is this Goku? Kakarot rampages around battling the Z Fighters. Even with his Saiyan nature again, however though, he's unable to fully control himself as a great ape. This power alone though is enough to easily overwhelm all the Z Fighters. Yamcha knows to go in for the tail, so attempts to fire off a Kamehameha to blow it off. However, the ape is too fast and swings at him to knock him away, knocking him out instantly. Krillin runs around the ape trying to yell out for Goku to remember him, but the ape just goes to punch down and crush him. Krillin is almost killed by the punch, however, Roshi jumps in front of him, protecting two of them with a turtle shell. Roshi bulks up, ready to destroy the moon once again to put an end to the ape's rampage. However, Kakarot remembers this from last time, and fires down a mouth blast at Roshi to stop him. He dodges out of the way, with Kakarot continuing to fire down blast to keep Roshi at bay. With Kakarot distracted by Roshi, Tien flies up into the air and unleashes a solar flare in Kakarot's face to blind him. With him blinded, Poir quickly transforms into a pair of scissors and cuts off Kakarot's tail. Kakarot roars out in pain as he reverts back down to his normal size. Krillin runs over to Kakarot and notices that this guy doesn't really seem to be like Goku. Kakarot looks up growling and punches Krillin right in the face. Krillin flies back knocked unconscious as Roshi yells out asking Kakarot what he's doing. This isn't like him. Kakarot yells out that he's not Goku. His name is Kakarot, a Saiyan warrior sent to Earth to destroy all humans. Roshi and Tien have no idea what he's talking about, but can't let him kill them all. They fly in to fight him, then weaken without his tail. He's having trouble fighting the pain in him. 
but they are just as weak if you're dealing with them as a great ape, so he's able to knock them both down. Kakarot stands victorious over the group, laughing out that even the Earth's strongest couldn't beat him. He goes to fire down a blast to end them all, but he is stopped by a blow to his neck. Kakarot coughs up blood and falls over unconscious. Piccolo Jr. looks down at Kakarot, sensing what he is. This isn't Goku at all. That bastard Kami must have done the same to Goku and split the evil in his heart, separating him into this creature here. He could kill him now, but he knows that this isn't the one who killed his father, so he just takes him along with him back to his hut. Once Kakarot comes to, he tries to attack Piccolo, but is too weakened from before. Piccolo interrogates Kakarot, with him confirming what he is, and that their ambitions are aligned for taking over this planet. However, they both agree that they want to take over this planet for separate goals, though agree to join forces for now, that way they can take out their good counterparts. From there, then they'll battle each other. Kakarot and Piccolo Jr. trade together, as the Z fighters recover and wonder what the hell that Kakarot business was all about. At the 23rd World Tournament, the group all beat up again, with them suspicious of Goku at first after all this time, but he tells them that that wasn't him that they fought, it was his evil half Kami split from him named Kakarot. Krillin is shocked that Goku even had an evil half, as Goku says he didn't think he did either, and he kept talking about all these Saiyan things and he didn't understand it. Speaking of the devil, Kakarot walks up right behind them, smiling. He's grown quite a bit since they last saw him with his tail even having grown back. Goku and Kakarot stare each other down, with both of them smiling, excited for the challenge. The main tournament roster comes up, with Kakarot's inclusion shifting the matches by a fair bit. The first match is between Goku and Tien, which goes about as it did canon, with the next match being Kakarot pitted against Chi-Chi. Chi-Chi unfortunately confuses Kakarot with Goku, However, Kakarot does remember the promise they made to her a long time ago, and weaponizes it against her, saying he does remember her, but doesn't care, telling her to leave him alone forever. This breaks Chi-Chi's heart, with her forfeiting the match. Thankfully, Goku is able to salvage it, confessing to her that it was really him that she made the promise to, with her realizing that this man is her true Goku, with him still getting engaged. The next two matches go on as they do in canon, with the semi-finals starting out with Goku versus Kakarot. The two stare down, ready to brawl for the first time in years. This time, their power has returned, so this could be anybody's match. They clash blows, with Goku being more the defensive and light on his feet, while Kakarot is the brute brawler, going for the physical way out. Goku is able to move around him dealing blows all over, which begins to annoy Kakarot, with him lashing out a key blast out of his mouth. Goku quickly counters with a Kamehameha, with a beam struggle commencing and blowing back the audience. Kakarot's beam eventually overcomes Goku, with him needing to roll under the blast, with him rushing in to land a meteor combination on Kakarot. Kakarot shoots down eye beams at Goku, with him catching them in his hand. Kakarot body slams Goku to the ground, beginning to beat on him with Goku unleashing a Kamehameha out of his feet to blow Kakarot off of him. Kakarot goes flying off, with Goku rushing up, flying in to headbutt him in the back. Kakarot rolls in the air and slams onto the ground, outside of the arena. Everybody cheers as the speed say Goku is the victor. The announcer goes to announce Goku's victory, but is blasted at and killed by Kakarot. Kakarot yells out that he doesn't care about this stupid tournament anymore, and now he just wants Goku dead. The crowd runs away screaming, as Piccolo gets in front of Kakarot yelling at him not to intervene. He wants his fight with Goku too, so he's just gotta accept his loss. Kakarot blasts in Piccolo's face, with Piccolo falling back unconscious. Kakarot laughs saying that he only used it for training, and that he's not getting his way. Goku rushes to Piccolo's side to see if he's okay, with Kakarot rushing at him. Kakarot and Goku continue to battle, with the others trying to jump in to help, but Goku tells him not to, as he can handle him alone. Kakarot tells him not to be cocky as they continue fighting. However, Kakarot's cockiness gets the best of him, as his brute fighting style compared to Goku's new combi training gives Goku the edge. Goku keeps knocking Kakarot down, with Kakarot struggling to his feet. Goku bends down to his level, telling him he knows that he's supposed to be an evil version of himself, but if he's him, then he should know when he's beat. 
He just needs more training, and not for any kind of revenge, but for betterment of himself, like what he's been doing all this time. He can't imagine if Kakarot was how he always was. If he went and destroyed all of humanity, then he wouldn't have gotten to meet all of these amazingly strong people out there on Earth, and make all of the bonds with the friends that he has today. He's gonna let Kakarot go, and the next time he sees him, he wants him to be stronger than before, but not in an evil way. Kakarot stares in madness at Goku, not wanting to believe what he's saying, but he just turns and flies away as fast as he can. With Kakarot out of the picture for now, Goku asks Piccolo if he'd still like to fight, with the bruised and battered Piccolo saying, of course he would. He knew that imposter wouldn't be able to get the upper hand on the real deal. Goku smiles and gives Piccolo a senzu bead as he takes one of his own to make the fight fair. Goku and Piccolo then begin their intense battle. For many years, Kakarot hides out in solitude, training hard by himself the only way he can, killing humans. He doesn't kill too many to get the attention of Goku and Kami, but enough to satisfy his lust for blood and for sport. Years continue to pass with Kakarot trying every way in his power to overcome his other half. But he can't. No matter what, he can't increase the power by himself anymore. Right when he begins to think he's reached his limit, he senses a large power approaching him. One larger than anything he's ever felt before. Is it Goku? However, he recognizes who it is right away. It's his brother, Raditz. Kakarot is immediately ecstatic to see his brother again, but Raditz immediately demands to know why this planet hasn't been exterminated, as there's still much life left on the planet. Kakarot tells his brother that there are strange magical creatures on this planet, and that one of them has split him into two, and his good half has managed to overcome him in power. Even in his great ape state, he's not able to overcome him or his forces of good. Raditz is shocked that this planet has abilities to split people into two. He thought this was a low-level planet, but apparently having his baby brother sent here wasn't such a good idea after all. Kakarot tells him that with more training he'll be able to overcome his other half, and then this planet will be his. Raditz is happy to see the fire in his brother's eyes, telling him that he's happy to help him and take over this planet, mainly since it'll get him out of Vegeta and Nappa's way for a while. Kakarot says that with Raditz's power, Goku should be nothing, but Kami and some of his friends have strange abilities, and with the Dragon Balls on their side, victory isn't assured. After hearing all the intel from Kakarot, Raditz decides that he's going to need some serious Saiyan training so he can take over this planet. He offers to take him back to the Frieza base for some real Saiyan training. Kakarot is very willing to finally get off of this planet, so joins with his brother to leave Earth. Raditz calls down another pod that Kakarot could ride in, and they depart the planet, off to prepare to take it over.